Hi guys, it's Christina. I'm a holistic nutritionist and in this episode I'm going to share with you my 13 top tips for beginners venturing the world of vegetarianism. I am no way pressuring you to become a vegetarian or follow a specific diet. Uh, I don't follow a specific diet, I don't classify myself as following a specific diet. I think you should do what is right for you. However, understanding more how you can incorporate plants into your life has many, many benefits, which include less serious diseases and also increase in lifespan. Before we begin, if you're someone that has a serious medical condition, you feed children or your immune system is compromised, then do, do seek for advice from a registered dietitian. And let's get started. It's much easier to be a vegetarian than you may think. If you focus on how hard it is to be a vegetarian, then believe me, it will be hard. But if you focus on making the process fun, for example, okay, what can I discover today? What type of foods, what type of foods, new specifically, can I incorporate into my life today? Then that process will be fun and you will discover some foods that will become part of your lifestyle, uh, creating consistency and as a result making it easier for you. Obviously, every time that you start something different, when you start any habit, it will take some time to build up, but the more you do it, the easier it will become. Be okay with not getting it right from the start. It's something that you can work on and it's a fun process. It's part of the learning curve. Be okay with that and start over again. Schedule extra time for meal preparation. Any new habit requires extra time in the beginning before you get used to it. So creating meal plans sets you up for success. It will take some time in the beginning, but slowly, slowly it will become habit and you will do those meal plans much quicker. Planning also will be required when you go out, when you travel. So just calling up the restaurant, making sure that they have some vegetarian food available is really crucial. Or also when you travel, for example, make sure that you have snacks with you. So you need to be extra prepared, especially in the beginning, until, until you learn the ropes. Stock up on essential. Super, super important. When I changed my diet, I made sure that I had some basic ingredients in my cupboards, like chickpeas, for example, which I love, or beans, or leg any other types of legumes, and also lots of vegetables in my fridge to make sure when I come from work, for example, I have them available and I don't have to go for a pizza, for example, or ordering online. or Going back to something that I'm used to, focus on adding new ingredients and new flavors. Either every week or every day, write down the ingredients that you eat and then try either the next day or the next week to add something new. Make it this a fun game. Okay, so today I tried five different ingredients. What about I try six the following day? Learn five recipes that you will love. If you find five recipes that you absolutely love and they can become your go-to because you will learn them by heart, you'll learn how to do them, then trust me, you will know exactly what you need to have in your cupboard and in your fridge so that on a weekly basis you can refer to them. You can find recipes online, there's so many recipes, delicious recipes that you can find online. You can also use Pinterest as your source. I'll also have a look on my site. Don't be afraid of dairy. Some vegetarians, they allow themselves to eat dairy. I don't think it's necessarily bad. I know that they do have some bad reputation, but it's not all that bad. If you can get good source of dairy, then feel free to do it. I usually eat cheese or I eat yogurt because uh, yogurt especially is full of probiotics and it's delicious and it's quite easy 
uh, to eat as a snack or like a dinner with something else. An epidemiological study across 21 countries on thousands of individuals between 35 and 70 years old showed that dairy consumption was associated with lower risk of mortality and cardiovascular diseases. So although dairy is not that bad if you can get it from good sources, be also open into trying alternatives like almond milk or coconut yogurt. Give it a try or kefir with maybe coconut water or just water because there are kefir you can get with just water. So give them, give them a go. Make it like the new thing that you will try this day or this week. The reason that you need to eat a variety of foods is because you ensure that you get a variety of nutrients that are essential for your health. Combine different macronutrients in each meal. Always make sure that in each of your meals you have different macros. So you have protein, you have carbs and you have fats. Also ensure that there is lots of vegetables so that your carb options are mainly coming from a variety of vegetables. Supplement is another one. Vegetarian diet is not as strict as vegan diet. So actually a vegetarian can get all the nutrients necessary from the foods. So what I would recommend is actually one, make sure that you get your blood checked. So if there is any deficiency, you can ensure that you can incorporate certain foods to minimize the deficiency. And if de the deficiency is serious, then you can get supplements while trying to fix that deficiency, deficiency through nutrition. This is for everyone. Uh, vitamin D is super, super important, especially in the winter. So if you're someone that you're constantly wearing sunblock or if there's not enough sun, then definitely do consume vitamin D, especially during the winter. Determine and focus on the reason. It is very important to understand why you're doing what you're doing, why you're trying to do the change. For example, when I decided to become a vegan, it was a way for me to incorporate more plant-based foods into my life. After that year, I started becoming more flexible. So determine your reason why, because Whenever you're about to sleep, you can refer to it. You can even write it down. Sometimes writing it makes it much more memorable and it is easier to bring it to your mind when, when needed. People don't get you, it's okay. If you're a person that has difficulty explaining why you're following a specific diet, then I would say that you don't always need to explain yourself. You don't always need to justify why you're doing what you're doing. You can always say, no, thank you, I'm not in the mood for eating that, which I used to do. So uh, during the year that I was vegan, I stopped actually uh, saying, oh, you know, I'm a vegan now, or, and people ask me, oh, why, why is that, why is that? What I started to do is, you know what, I don't feel like eating this um, a meat plate. I just want something more vegetarian based. Uh, I want more vegetables in my diet. So when you're not defining yourself in a way, then it's much easier for people to accept it. And I'll also, and I think that in today's world, people are more accepting actually of different diets. So I think it's much easier than it used to be. And this gets us to no need to label yourself. I feel like we love labeling ourselves these days. But I'm not a big fan. I'm not a fan of saying I'm a vegan, I'm a vegetarian, I'm a flexitarian. I'm just a person that wants to include more things in our lives. And I feel like if you categorize or classify yourself as a certain type of person, that also brings some type of division. You're just someone that prefers eating some foods and avoids other. That's all there is. These were my 13 top tips on how to incorporate more of a vegetarian type of diet in your life. Below this video, you can find a couple of links. One link is for my snack guide, for a healthy snack guide, and the other link is my guide on health and happiness for life. So feel free to grab those. 
And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment on the section below, share it with anyone you think will find it useful, and do subscribe because I upload new content every week. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you in the next episode.